We have seen how to find square root of perfect and non-perfect squares in our previous videos. But to use both these shortcuts, you have to identify whether a number is a perfect square or not in the first place. Perfect squares are those numbers whose square root is always an integer. When the square root is in decimal form, we say that it's a non-perfect square. Always remember that a perfect square will end in 1, 4, 6, 9, 5 and even number of zeros. Also, the digital roots of a perfect square will be 1, 4, 7 and 9. Now, what does digital roots mean? Let's understand it with an example. Let's take a number 3136. Its digital root will be 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 6, which is 13. Now, since 13 is a double digit number, we have to add 1 and 3. This process has to be done until you get a single digit number. So, here 1 plus 3 equals to 4. And this 4 is the digital root of the number 3136. If suppose, we test a number with these two methods and any one of them fail, we can simply conclude that the number is not a perfect square. So let's try it out. Let's check the number 5469. Our first step is to check the unit's place of this number. Since it is 9, we can't rule out the possibility of it being a perfect square. Now our second rule says that its digital root should be 1, 4, 7 or 9 for it to be a perfect square. So let's find out. Here 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9 equals 24 and 2 plus 4 equals to 6. Now this does not fulfill the condition. So our test is over and we can say that 5, 4, 6, 9 is not a perfect square. But some numbers pass both these tests and yet they don't turn out to be perfect squares. So let's take an example. 3826. It ends with a 6, so fits in our first rule, and its digital root is 1. It fits in our second rule as well. But its square root is 61.85, which is a decimal number. So now that both our tests have not confirmed that this is not a perfect square, we have to go for the third and final step. Here, we have to write 3826 in the form of its prime factors, and its prime factors should be raised to an even number. Prime factors are like atoms in a molecule. They are the building blocks of a number. Many atoms together constitute a molecule. In a similar way, prime factors together constitute the number. For example, 144 can be written in the prime factor form as 2 raised to 4 into 3 square. So we can write 3826 equals to 2 into 1913. Now 1913 is a prime number that is, it cannot be factorized further. Since the prime factors of 3826 are not raised to an even number, we can say without any doubt that this is not a perfect square. If you have observed carefully, if a number is actually perfect square, you have to tested with all these three steps. If it is not a perfect square, then one of the tests will fail. The moment test fails in any of the three steps, you can conclude that it's not a perfect square and you don't need to solve further. Let's take an example of a perfect square. So let's take 729. Step one is to check for the last digit. Here it's nine, so it doesn't violate our rule. So let's move on to the next step. Step two is to calculate digital root. So digital root of 729 equals to seven plus two plus nine equals to 18. And then we have to add one plus 8, so that is ultimately equal to 9. This also doesn't violate our condition. So we have to go for step 3 of finding prime factors. When you find the prime factors of 729, you see that it is equal to 3 raised to 6. Here we can form 3 pairs of 3 squares, so it's confirmed that this is a perfect square. Hope this video has helped you. Check out our videos on shortcut to finding square root of perfect and non-perfect squares. Your sharing of this video is much appreciated. Got a burning question to ask or any suggestions to give? Put them down in the comment section below and we'll be happy to read them out. And make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Instagram and subscribe for more weekly science and maths videos.